We were talking about uh, ADHD, and yep. I had um, who was it? Oh, it was Dr. Andy Galpin. He had a, a very interesting perspective, and I'm not saying that like people don't need to take like your Adderall. Like yeah. I think that can be very beneficial for a lot of people. His spin was he goes, man, I think everyone has it to a degree. 100%. He goes, but it's what are you interested in? He goes, I don't take anything, and I'll burn an all nighter. He's like mid 30s late 30s he goes i'll burn an all-nighter researching stuff that i'm interested in it's like oh shit it's time to go to work yeah and so that's his spin is you know our kids in school do they need medication or do they need different topics and and i think it could be a mix of both yeah but it was just i know he's on that one side and i'm not going to put words in his mouth that was years ago but that was just a different perspective that yeah. i found interesting if you had more things that you were really interested in in school, would you be as likely? Am I going to pay attention to all the calculus? No. no. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. If you threw in sports performance in there or something dietetic, yeah, I'm going to pay more attention. In high school, if, if I had a music theory, for sure. If I had rock history, all in. Yeah. yeah. All in. Yeah, but those don't make any money for the state. So, <laughs> well, all right, here we go. <laughs> That's the issue, right? So, like, yeah. all of uh, uh, education is built around money for the, the populace, the state, mm -hmm. the government. So, you produce workers based on uh, the education we're giving the kids, right? We're giving, them yeah. ki giving the kids education to produce the best, most efficient worker, mm -hmm. not a free thinker, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's so, fair. If you look at it that way, of course they're bored, you know. Plus, they're sitting in front of a tablet all the time or their phone, and they're not developing uh, their frontal cortex and their ability to imagine and their ability to, like, think freely. They're being fed a bunch of information and dopamine all the time, mm -hmm. so they don't know how to artificially create that or earn it. They just fed it all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. of course, they're ADHD. I yeah. mean, if I'm on the phone all the time, I'm fucking fried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And I yeah. think it was, was it Andrew Tate? You and I talked about this, how TikTok has and can create ADHD. Oh, 100%. Because if yeah. you're not captured, what, under five seconds? Yeah. You're not staying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, unless you get that huge spike of it immediately yeah. in all things of life now, too, mm -hmm. you're lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Which is a good it. and a bad thing, right? So I think... Social media is fantastic, right? As a coach, as a trainer, mm -hmm. as a uh, person, mm -hmm. I've learned it so much from TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, social media in general, just because I have access to coaches mm -hmm. at the highest level all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, 3 a.m., laying in bed, I can go look up Dave Tate and listen to information. Sure. You know? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. The problem is, at 3 a.m., I can pull out my phone and I can listen to Dave Tate for two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So there's a positive and the negative. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm going to compare it to smoking because smoking, we have all this data on yeah. what smoking does to our brains, how yeah. it makes us unhealthier. I feel like social media, it's been around for a little bit, but I still think it's new enough to the point where we're, we still don't have all the data on how it impacts our mental health. No. I feel like as the years go on and we get like more <laughs> data about suicide rates or mental health, like I feel like then, just like we did with smoking, yeah. I see us having some type of regulation just yeah. like we did with smoking. Once we have like more data about how it impacks us, I guess. But <clears throat> just there's a lot of data out there. Yeah, that was a point. They thought cigarettes were healthy for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like for throat issues. Yeah. They'd have you smoke cigarettes to yeah. help calm down your throat. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. I mean, look at drinking now. Like, there's this whole fad of people that don't drink. Yeah. Young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I stopped drinking over a year ago, about a year ago. Nice. Um, and there's all these people jumping in on the, the AF train, you know, the mm -hmm. alcohol-free train. Mm -hmm. And they're clearer. They think better. They're thinner. They're more healthy. They're more agile. They're better athletes. Mm -hmm. And they don't make stupid fucking decisions all the time. And it's gone from that being the comedic joke in life of I got too hammered and messed up my car to that's just fucking sad mm -hmm. you're wasting money right. you're wasting time you're killing yourself mm -hmm. yeah. like i made a post about it the other day on linkedin did you started some fires with some people but <clears throat> well, i was gonna throw gasoline on it oh yeah that's it, right <laughs> so i was at an event and we were doing a raffle right so we raffled off all these items this fascinated me by the way like 
the way humans react to things boggles my mind, right? Because mm-hmm. we're, we're very sheepish, right? So it's this group of 100 plus people. We're sitting in this room. We're raffling off all these items. The silent rat auction ends. We come up and they have the clipboard and they're going through it saying, hey, listen, this went for 600 bucks. Who wants to bid more to help for the organization? Well, <clears throat> they bid off. I gave in three coaching sessions, which I charge $135 a session. Mm-hmm. So three coaching sessions is a decent amount of change. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my girlfriend gave in mindset coaching. She charges a lot more than I do per session. Um, and then uh, Garrett, uh, uh, one of the guys I know does uh, diet work or diet coaching, also gave in a 45 minute counseling session. So there's like a lot of money in this. It's like a $1,600 value. Sure. It went for 200 fucking dollars. Okay. <laughs> God bless. 200 bucks. All right. So, so as pissed. they pull this thing up, nobody bid on it first off, which was insane. The second, when we went up there, she's reading it. She's like, listen, we're going to start the bidding at 200 bucks. Because we originally started at 350 started at 200 The adult males in this room looked like they were being whipped with a fucking cattle prod. And they were like hunched over and like looking at their phones and like they were embarrassed and like didn't want to look at me. Because I stood in the front of the room. I yeah. wanted to see mm-hmm. who was, why this was happening, uh-huh. you know. And I, I said multiple times, I'm like, this is a great deal, guys. Like, this is a $1,500 value, and it's going for $200, right? You can get, like, almost your entire house in order. Yeah, with yeah that right? Yeah. Like, At least you're, it's on a good start, you know? That's a yeah, I mean, your healthy, healthy fitness, fitness starts, foundation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, huge. So it goes for $200. All these guys in the room were just, like, terrified to even talk about it, right? It's like they were so embarrassed to have this conversation about physical fitness that they were just, like, immediately turned into a... a, a destroyed three-year-old right Mm. and um the next item came up for bed was five bottles of bourbon the same motherfuckers that were so embarrassed to talk about it were now standing up pushing their seats back hollering holding their hands up making sure everybody saw them bid on this shit they went up for sixteen (laughs) hundred dollars This that means that we have replaced physical fitness mm-hmm. and becoming better as a human yep. with being lazy as fuck mm-hmm. and buying something that has done nothing through time but hurt you, harm your family, help you make bad decisions, and waste your time. Right? And were they all like overweight, out of shape? Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Every one of those guys could have used what we were giving. Mm-hmm. And at two hundred bucks, what a fucking steal. But the same guys were completely different in seconds when I was talking about bourbon. And it's like, is this masculinity? Yeah, micro like, example. You and Kylie still on? offering all that for like two hundo? Negative. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, right, right. Take a little extra. <laughs> it just blows my mind, though, yeah, right? Yeah. So, like, that's where we sit as a society. And unfortunately, right? it seems that's the game. Yeah. Is to make yeah. people less and less capable, yeah. is how it, it seems. Because why would we put that way up here? Like, yeah. why don't we brag about how fit you are, how healthy you are? And we do have those sectors. Yeah. But it's like, you know, we all love to train. Whatever that means, from pickleball to weights to sled work to basketball, whatever. Yeah. We love to train. And you have to learn to love it. It's yeah. not always fun. I got a whole stint about that. My, my whole, my whole workout here. Monday was not fun. Yeah. But it was good for me. It was the first yeah. one in a long time where I had to lay on the floor after. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I needed that today. Yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't looking forward to it. Yeah. Today I had a lighter, more fun. But it's that give and take. Yeah. And it's, I'm not saying I don't respect a good bottle of bourbon. But at a point it's, yeah, it's irrelevant. Well, it's because you have personal responsibility. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to wake up hungover, waste a full yeah. day of work because yeah. I was a slob. Because you're responsible. Yeah. Because you have personal responsibility, right? Right. So if you look at any decision oh, that we we're got making, fired up, Tim. We got him. Yeah. We got him fired up. <laughs> if you look at any decision you make, you have it will ultimately come down to my personal responsibility. I do not want to pick training because it's not instant gratification. Bourbon is. Mm-hmm. Training is. That's a good point. I have to leave here and invest myself, my time, my energy, my. Uh, uh, self-worth, mm-hmm. my mindset, everything 
into this to get the value. I have to work to get the value, mm -hmm. right? So I have to take responsibility to wake up in time, drive my car, dress accordingly, work out hard to get the work, to get the results, right? To put the work in to get the results. Bourbon, you can be in your fucking underwear, spin the top off, and you're golden. There's your gratification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's zero responsibility. Yeah. In fact, it removes responsibility. It's how many people say, oh man, I've had too much to drink, I'm not going anywhere tonight. Right. Or, man, I had too much to drink, I spent too much money, but hey, blame it on the alcohol, mm -hmm. right? Or I made a shitty decision, I spoke horribly to my wife or my kids, but hey, it was the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Zero personal responsibility. So it's just the easy way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually some, some type of deeper issue there too about why people drink in the first place. Like just yeah. like peop people work out, people have a reason, usually most people have a reason why they work out. Yeah. Um, some people have deep, deeper reason why they turn to alcohol, whether it's unfulfillment in their job, something that happened to them negatively in their life, there's yeah. always the quick fix is like yeah. what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than invest time to, to fix that, it's easier to just spin the cap off, yeah. I mean, that's the society we live in though, mm -hmm. it's quick fixes, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, and rather, uh, rather than fixing my issue, I'm going to find people that validate my position and then I don't have to change anything. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why we got kids walking around in fucking animal outfits telling everybody that they're a fucking fox. Like, that is asinine. Crazy to You're me. not talking about the Paul brothers, are you? <laughs> <laughs> because we can go there. But, it, but it, the yeah. reason why that happens is because people don't want to say... I should probably work on the home base here a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say fuck you. You got to work on yours because you. I'm awesome, but I don't want to try to do anything different. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work on myself because that takes effort. Yeah, I'd rather just say screw everybody else. They got to work on themselves. They're mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. You yeah. Know? it's holding everyone else to a higher standard than you hold yourself. Well, yeah, because then you don't have to do anything. Yeah, and change I would is love scary. to do that at the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I wish there were a pill for good health and fitness. I wish I yeah. could eat one meal a day and be done. And I love food. Yeah. I love food. Yeah. I wish I could eat one time a day. Yeah. Call it quits. Someone else. Well, you probably could. Yeah, I'm not going to smash three thousand calories at once. That's disgusting. That would be rough. That be, sounds like my breakfast. Like <laughs> I, I can do like I'll max at like a thousand to twelve hundred, and yeah. then I'm pretty full and I'm okay. But that's my max. I don't have a big yeah. frame. Yeah. You can, hammer, yet. you can hammer a lot more than I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, it, people don't want to have part of themselves die off. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you have to do. Well, it's part, scary. Part of, yeah, you, part of you has to die. It's like, oh, what, what happens when I do change? And then I think there's still that fear of being successful in something else. Oh, 100%. Maybe someone makes a lot of money, yeah. but there's that fear of, I could be super fit. For whatever reason, there's mm -hmm. that mental block of, yeah. of fear of success. Yeah. I've talked to my dad about that too, where people feel guilty about having a lot of wealth. Mm -hmm. Man, as our buddy Beef would say, smoke him if you got him, dude, you earned it. Yeah, you know? So I talk to coaches all the time. They're like, well, I don't want to use what I've done in the past as a catalyst to like get clients because I don't want to brag. Like, you earned that shit, bro. Yeah. Like, you earned all of it. You run like, a business or a charity? Yeah. Like, if, if you put the time in, use that shit as an example. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. the reason I work with the people I work with is because I love their stories, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Like, the coaches I follow, the coaches we follow, mm -hmm. we would never follow them if we didn't know what they did. Right. Right? So, for, to hide it away as some, like, moral high ground is the craziest shit I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it just shoots yourself in the foot. Right. You know? Right. I mean, once you meet, like, top-end athletes, you're, like, way less impressed than you would be because they're just normal fucking people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, really calming because you're actually way closer to the realm of professional athlete than you think you are. Mm -hmm. Like, each one of us is right on that crest of professional. Yeah. It's just a decision to take that next step, mm -hmm. you know, and then just understand that this next step might require things that are a little bit different, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit harder, that might make you make different decisions, but you're right there. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, and our bodies are capable of so much more than, oh what, we, than what we give them credit for. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's always an opportunity. Like, rest is good. Like, you got you to gotta rest, recover, but there's always an opportunity for you to, to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, see how far your body can actually go. Because oh, it can't right. go a lot farther, yeah. as you know. Yeah.
and that's the cool part is how much pain can you can you push through mm -hmm. like when your yeah. your body is just like dude I'm, I'm done I can't lift that barbell I can't run that sprint I can't jump for that ball anymore yeah. there you go how, how much how much pain will you go through more than the next guy yeah because that's why I've always loved individualized sports yeah strength training uh, <clears throat> uh, powerlifting strongman because it was me versus me mm -hmm. if I get absolutely whooped in a strongman competition because they're better than I am I'm fine with that yeah. I can leave there if I gave a hundred percent and trained my ass off to get there yeah and I was just beaten because they're better yeah fine with me mm -hmm. right I'm actually going up in a weight class next year because I want to compete with the 300 pounders nice like I want that so bad because it's a bigger dragon to beat yeah you mm -hmm. know? but if I go in and I destroy everybody and I didn't try very hard I hate that competition Mm -hmm. I don't want that fucking medal. Right. Because it's not, I'm not doing anything. Right. I'm not challenged at all. It's not a training day for you. Yeah. yeah. And it's useless. You know, I want to train against the hardest motherfucker ever mm -hmm. because then I'm better, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Learning to turn that fire on and be okay with the pain and okay with it and understand that that's there to make you better. Mm -hmm. That is, that is the difference between excellence and okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, like working out or training, you know, like there's a there's a specific response I want for my body because this is who I want to beat, yeah. you know, that's training. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? yeah. Well, While talking to our buddy Big Mike, he runs the clinic in Carmel that I'll contract out of, mm -hmm. and they they go to they were at the Arnold um, recently, and they work on a lot of strongmen and powerlifters and stuff, and they were telling me. There was a guy who still got second after he had ripped his hamstring. Yeah. I mean, bad. It wasn't a small grade one, low grade two strain. It was not good. And he still had to deadlift uh, massive amounts of weight yeah. and still did it. Now, I'm not recommending that to people. No, but it's fucking possible. He, he, right? he, is, he is a possible. professional athlete, yeah. but that is the level that they're willing to go to. Yeah. And, and if you're not ready for that sort of pain, yeah. it's just a different... Like I said, not everyone has to do that. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going for that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it means it's possible, right? It, it is possible. That's yeah. why I was always turned on with people that made a ton of wealth. Awesome. means it's possible, mm -hmm. right? I took a picture with uh, Evan, calls himself T-Rex, big strongman guy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and Big Z. Does he have Vegas. really small arms? You would assume so with the name T-Rex, but the dude is massive. Mm -hmm. right? It's just like his shtick. He's got tattoos right here, and he goes like this. Interesting. Yeah, he's a cool dude. I really uh, was hoping that he'd like have to squat lower to deadlift. Because I know, of something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he had like a deformity with like no forearms, just hands. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, What was listen, the second name you said? Big Z, Zadrunas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the basketball player? No. Oh, uh, that's Zadrunas Ilgauskas. That's the yeah. basketball player. Sorry. I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. He I knows. Wouldn't, ex <laughs> wouldn't expect you to know every that. Every NBA player, every contract of every NBA oh, player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't test this man. There you go. I, I would have no idea. You could make up yeah. names and I'd be like, oh, yeah. Okay, he probably whatever. knows everyone you're about to coach. <laughs> Sounds oh, yeah, a lot like you. Yeah. 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 Um, but I met him and I took a picture between them. And uh, these guys are massive, right? Mm -hmm. But I want that. Yeah. And you're not want... small either. I mean, they're huge, right? I look like a child. And, <laughs> but I'm sitting there thinking, I'm shaking his hand, talking to him, and I'm like, you know what? This is totally possible, dude. You're not that much bigger. You know, you're bigger, but I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to compete against you because I want to stand on the same level, right? Because mm -hmm. I think that if you can make it, it's just a decision in my book. Yeah. You know, so I have that shit written down in my bathroom. I will compete at that level. Yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's when is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, and so do you have that down. written down? You, you written it down? Yeah. Uh, I have like the on the competitions a, I'm doing too. Like nice. Stapled on the wall in my nice. mind. Yeah. So, Hell yeah. There's something yeah. about writing something down. There's, yeah. there's one that like you, yeah. say, you say it in your mind, but like the act of putting something to paper. I mean, people can type, but I think handwriting it, I think is even better. And the fact that you can like see it every day. Yeah. Um, I have a little index card on my desk that, Oh. describes the person that I want to become and I just read it every day yeah, hell yeah. it's a good well, thing to go it's also training your subconscious mm -hmm. right so it's the same thing so uh, my girlfriend Kylie does mindset coaching mm -hmm. and she said I don't like how you're negative to yourself in the gym because I used to just beat the shit out of myself I'd mm -hmm. give myself a talking to her in the mirror you know like shut your fucking pussy why can't you do this you're weak as shit 
And uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got to put your own boot in your own. Ass. I know, exactly. right? You so, know? I, so I just lived that sometimes. lifestyle, right? And I would constantly leave the gym, and I'm like, man, I could have done better, could have done better. Negative, 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 right? She goes, why don't you try being positive? And at the time, I had this really cool mustache, like it was super huge. <sighs> Bring it back. Oh, I yeah. wax Trust it me. too. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's Captain fantastic. Hook, just oh, yeah. oh, do yeah. it. It comes For out like real far. Your yeah. first competition. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And my kilt and everything. Right? Please. Yeah. Please. So she said, I want you to be positive. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to test this because nothing she's told me as far, well, really everything has been right. Right. So I thought, all right, I'll try it. I stood in front of the mirror and I said, I love your mustache. You're a great <laughs> fucking lifter. You're blessed to be here. This is fucking great. Yeah. I had the best lift I've had in years. Mm -hmm. I do that every time now. Like, I laugh when I go up to the bar now. Like, yeah. I get the opportunity to be here. You know, like, yeah. that is so fucking cool. Like, yeah. I get to do this. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to teaching my subconscious that, this is a negative thing. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching it that it's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. thing. And I'm getting way more out of it. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. The note card, 100% believe that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And when we go back to create highlights for the show, we'll highlight that where you say she's right about everything. Yeah. We'll, you we'll should make, do that. We'll make sure to highlight yeah. that. And, like, and, yeah. we're going to put you on the biggest pedestal. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. 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 What you should do is, like, just put, like, in writing as I say it so it types it out. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And flashes shooter, the whole shooter time. Types, <laughs> hey, like, best boyfriend award of the yeah. year, and yeah. you're only in Q1. Right. right. <laughs> Good start for at least one more quarter, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I think there. So I read about water and vibration, okay. like with energy stuff. So yeah, you yeah. telling yourself positive things, writing it down, saying it to yourself, because our bodies are eighty percent water. Mm -hmm. And so I've read how, if there's something like chaos, stress, mm -hmm. you see it's water is sporadic it's all over the place yeah if there's a fluid sound or calming like it's it's yeah. all in sync and that can happen yeah. with thought too yep it's negative chaotic thoughts or self-talk yeah. you're all over the place yep that like your body's getting in sync yeah i'm, I'm the shit have you great, seen the one with great frozen mustache. water crystals uh, what they look like when you speak negative to them? It might have been this too. in the same book. It was a little thin book. Is that what? the one you read? I'm gonna see yeah. this. That's yeah, really cool. I think so, but I'd have to. Yeah, it was a little thin book. Yeah, it's super cool. Have you heard of the rice experiment? No. So, uh, I always say General Yamamoto. That's not who this guy is, but it's. Uh, it sounds like that. I don't know his name. I should have looked it up. But That's okay. Why this guy technical? cooked uh, three cups of rice cooked the rice, put it in three separate containers, marked one ignore, marked one love, marked one hate. All right? This sounds insane, but it's real. And over time, several weeks, I think it was like a 16 weeks or something like that, he ignored one completely, the one that said ignore, spoke horrible words to the one hate that said hate, and then spoke loving words like cherishing, just very aggressively uh, passionate God, to your grains right? look so good today. Yeah, just <laughs> seriously, like, he was positive <laughs> with everything he said. You're gonna go try this. After 16 weeks, there was no mold on the love, the hate was covered in it, and the ignore was 50-50. Interesting. <laughs> were, were they left, like, room temp? Same, they were literally next to each other. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. Boggles That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. But it just means we yeah. have control over shit. We don't think we do, mm -hmm. right? So that's, I mean, it changed my mindset on a whole lot of stuff. Like yeah, my effort levels and things, the way I talk to people, um, which has uh, strangely become a little bit more direct mm -hmm. because I see the power in humans and their abilities. And it astonishes me when it's uh, just wasted, mm -hmm. right? So, like, talking to an athlete, I trained 15 new basketball last night, and I ran them till they almost all threw up. Excellent. But after we did all the, the workouts we were doing, I made them all link hands yeah. and run. And they said, well, how many of these are we doing? And I said, till I'm happy. And then I gave them some arbitrary Your number, dick. like 30, right? You suck. <laughs> so <clears throat> the goal was to have them one fall off each time, you know, when they were getting tired. 
one would fall off. They would all tell her she's okay. This is, I don't know why it kind of makes me emotional, but it's cool. So she would fall off, one of them would, and the girls would run and they would make it to the end and come back. <clears throat> I don't know why that's making me emotional, but they would talk to each other the whole time and, and they would see that the value of a team is better as a whole so they would watch their teammates run and go you know what I might be in pain but they need me mm -hmm. so they would get back up and go at the very end of the workout right so they're smoked yeah so all the excuses all the bullshit in the middle they saw the value of the team and their potential to help the team or hurt the team and it took over everything it bypassed all pain mm. right mm -hmm. fucking fascinating wow yeah. right that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the first time you've done that before with a group? To a, a group of girls, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and you have daughters, too. Yeah, so I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably why it makes me emotional. It hits home a little. Yeah. yeah. But it also, yeah. I think, took them off of the despise of you making them run forever. Well, it, I And think, it kind of yeah. made them get together, yeah. not against you, but like that happens with, with big groups. Like yeah. um, Dr. Owens, who was in the military, yeah. he would borderline be an asshole to his yeah. guys so they would kind of team up together like wow at least that sucks together 100 percent. at least it sucks together yeah yeah right and then yeah. If, if you're struggling and you have the rest of the team hey it sucks you're cool come on like grab my hand you're okay like when you have that yep. you're you have a little more in the tank you have a little more in the tank every time well because you have a higher value or you have a mm -hmm. higher purpose right yeah. that's the whole thing it's like Yes, you're tired. Yes, training is hard. Yes, um, you know, this might be the most difficult thing you've ever done. But what's the purpose behind it? Mm -hmm. Like, if there's no value, that's why I can't work out, like, arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. Because I have no, there's no value to it, mm -hmm. you know? I don't even, I don't give a shit about how I look enough to just arbitrarily work out, mm -hmm. right? I have to pick a goal because I see the value in the goal. Mm -hmm. And then I'll lift, like, yeah. all the time, religiously. Yeah. But part of that is, is I get to prove to other people that it's possible, mm -hmm. right? So like, that's why talking about training is my favorite is because if you can light that fire, mm -hmm. people are watching you constantly, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're driven and motivated and excited and pushing towards a goal that makes you test yourself constantly, whether or not you know it, people are following you, watching you, hoping you're gonna win you're doing something they want to do. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the but the guts to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and they're learning that it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's inspiring. I want to transition into. Uh, I think that leads us into what. What do you do? What? How? What got you to yeah. here? Do you want to yeah. just for the yeah. audience just explain like yeah, Chris yeah. Ewing everybody? Yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, that that's like one of the best like intro conversations we've had because yeah. like usually we ask them what Hell they do yeah. like right away. That's like one of the best intro conversations yeah. we've had. But yeah, for the audience, you may want to explain like who you are, like what you do, and kind of like how you got to this seat right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I watched Rocky Four when I was seven. Uh huh. And I thought, all right, my nose is too big for boxing, but I loved <laughs> the passion in the movie, and uh -huh. I couldn't put my finger on it, but, like, anything with that much passion for an individual fight, I just fell in love with. Mm -hmm. right? Over the Top, the arm wrestling movie with mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone, fell in love with that movie. Mm -hmm. They'll both I've give me blank that. stares. Oh, no, if you haven't seen that movie, that <laughs> boggles my mind. No, I, I think it. I've seen it 200 times, okay? What's it, it called again? Over the top. Over the top, okay. 200 times is over the top. It is <laughs> e extraordinarily ridiculous. Okay. But totally worth it. I'll watch it for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, <clears throat> it's good. You'll text me and be like, this is the greatest fucking thing I've ever watched. <laughs> right? So <clears throat> I just fell in love with the personal drive portion of it, right? So I didn't know what I wanted to do. Went to college, got married, um, had three daughters, ended up getting a divorce. During that time, I had opened a gym. So I opened a gym uh, for strong men and power lifters at 25 years old. Oh, so nice. Owned a gym in a city of, I think it was 20,000 people, Paducah, Kentucky. Keep going. I'm just going to change some things here. Yeah. Um, what, what, what part of Kentucky? What Paducah. Paducah. Okay. You know where that is? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of the city before. I've worked with people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like small there. Western Kentucky area. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, 
my first week in Kentucky in Paducah, a kid drove past me without shoes on on a fucking tractor. So like <laughs> on the main road. So that's Paducah. Okay. You know? um, so we opened up this gym. We had two guys that competed in World's Strongest Man. One of them won it in the 189 division. Um, we had several females that could pull over 405. Like we had really good strength athletes. Um, the problem was I was in Paducah, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So my maximum potential was very low. Mm-hmm. Um, got into banking uh, after my divorce. Uh, did business development for a bank. Thought I was really good at it. Moved to Indy to work for J.P. Morgan. Mm-hmm. Ended up working in a cubicle 60 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was going to shoot myself. Mm-hmm. I was drinking all the time. Uh, out of shape, overweight. Not training at all. If I did, my training was subpar. So I hated myself for that, hated my job. Got into business development, got back into training, um, worked for a small club, and created what I call the Atlas process, which is my business now. Um, it's mindset coaching, personal training, and recovery. So uh, it was mindset training and nutrition, but I don't want to fuck with nutrition. So it's you taken, got me. Yeah, I got you. It's taking so much <laughs> yeah. of my time, but like, uh, anyways. So I opened this process, and it's called a process because I don't want to build subpar athletes for a certain amount of time. I want to build changed individuals, right? I want to build a process that never stops in your life. So I will never. Uh, bar a doctor telling me that I will die if I touch a barbell, not stop lifting, mm-hmm. right? Because I see so much potential in myself, mm-hmm. right? And I think that the number one reason people don't push themselves is because they don't believe it's possible. And when you get them in the weight room and they start pushing weight and they start realizing that it's just about effort and consistency and understanding the process and sticking to a process that it changes their whole fucking life. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they look at their kids and they say, you know what? I understand that you're not where I want you right now. Maybe we have a shit relationship, but the process is 1% better every day. So in 365 days, I'm 365% better. Mm -hmm. So it's no matter what it is, I'm going to take that 1% today. Mm -hmm. Because in the gym earlier, I squatted whatever I squatted and thought I was going to fucking shit myself. This is way easier. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm taking the the stress and the the hard shit out of life, making them do it in the gym, so everything else is easier. Right. Mm -hmm. That and they understand that it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw your 1% every day post. Yeah. Tim always says 1% every day. Yeah. Like religiously, that is that is yeah. his his phrase. It's one percent yeah. a day. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. But I agree with you. Like it, when you do hard stuff in the gym, whatever it is, from you know lifting to you know hardcore basketball, to whatever. Like yeah. hard stuff in that environment yeah. makes everything else more endurable oh, or yeah, more totally. durable. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Making up words on the show, we do that. It's okay, man. Yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, but I agree with you when it's when it's super hard and painful like physically painful and miserable Mm -hmm. man i did that uh this jerk off being one at work is yeah yeah that's that's their thing that ain't me like i i had a took a business course once where they said not everything is personal don't be so selfish to think so yeah i was like huh yeah it's not it's not all about me it's not all about me like it's not all personal not all that's beautiful yeah put that on a t-shirt (laughs) <laughs> I, I will. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, yeah, I got to connect with, with my guy about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which they would be good on the show, too. Anyway, tangents. Yeah. See, that's why it's off the dome. We just stuck <laughs> yeah. it. I like it. I like I'm it. good at yapping. But, all right, so, yeah, you're taking people through through hard stuff like that. Yep. And that's a big part of your process. So yep. That uh, is the process. The process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, find hard shit and get good doing at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or get good doing it. Yeah. 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 And you mentioned a couple times, but... Who are the types of athletes that you work with? What's do you have like a certain uh, age group? Uh, who who do you work with the most? Uh, so I have a intake form, thanks to you and your help. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Credit. That uh, I'll take anybody that gives a shit. Mm-hmm. I will. So I like that. I do yeah. not train people that don't see um, 
they don't have the desire to do anything with their life, mm -hmm. right? I just met with a client that I'm officially not going to take on. I've gone back and forth a couple times. I was hoping you'd tell this story. But everything was a fucking excuse, right? So we're sitting in this coffee shop, we're having this conversation, and <clears throat> not to get religious or anything, but he kept throwing religion in. He kept saying, you know, well, God's testing me with this, God's doing this, like, I'm essentially Job. I'm like, okay, well, Job was God's favorite servant written in the Bible was God's favorite servant. So this guy was perfect in God's eyes and he allowed the devil to attack him personally, wipe his whole family out, burn everything he had and test him, give him leprosy and shun from the public. I said, you think that you're fucking Job because you like are dating a shitty person and like there's drama involved and you make bad decisions because you're drinking? No, bro, you're not Job. You're not being tested by God. You're a fat, lazy piece of shit that makes bad decisions. And this is the accumulation of small decisions daily. You're not being tested. Mm -hmm. You're just dealing with the consequences of being an idiot. Mm -hmm. You're not so important that the almighty mighty creator of all is going to reach down and smite you. Mm -hmm. Like, no, bro, you're smiting yourself yeah. on a daily basis. So... That went over as well as you probably yeah. assume it went over, but yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, back to your communication being more direct. <laughs> well, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, though, right? Like, like we have all I of like these guys character. sitting around in this world saying, "I have this, and I'm tested by God," or like all these, all this crap uh, shit we tell ourselves all the time to take away the personal responsibility of our decisions mm -hmm. and blame it on something, whether it be God, the uh, family. Uh, teachers, whatever, whatever you want to use for that is irrelevant. But at the end of the day, we live in the richest nation on the planet where you can file bankruptcy and be a millionaire in six months, right? So if you take personal responsibility, you can do anything, right? Um, I don't believe that we even have a, that we even fathom what uh, virtue is, what uh, manliness is, what masculinity is because we're just lost in the sauce of validating our positions, mm -hmm. right? The same guy kept saying, well, it's virtuous to be in struggle. And I said, the, my favorite quote from Jordan Peterson is, there is absolutely nothing virtuous about a rabbit. A rabbit is prey. A rabbit gets destroyed. However, there is something virtuous about a wolf because the wolf chooses to eat you alive or not. Mm -hmm. It has the ability. It yeah. said, you are not anywhere close to a wolf. If you wanted to hurt me, I would destroy you. You have no virtue. Yeah. But you say you do, and you can pull all the words out of the Bible you want or whatever book you want or whatever to sound like you do, but because you don't actually have it, you're lost in trying to validate your position all the time. Right? Yeah. If you know you can accomplish things, like in the gym, I don't have to tell anybody what my totals are. Mm -hmm. If it's a conversation that I think I'm going to get something out of that by saying that, I'll do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever ask me anywhere what my totals are? I say, not enough. Because I don't think it's enough. Yeah. It's nothing to brag about. I'm not impressed about it yet. Yeah. So it's not enough. Because I understand that the virtue behind the situation is I'm capable to hold my own pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to do anything for me to sit around and brag about it. Right. It's absolutely useless. Right. So. Yeah. Jordan Peterson talks about that with like, quote, dangerous men. Yeah. And people say, oh, this toxic masculinity. He goes, no, it's not about masculinity. It's about weak men. He goes, those yeah. are the most dangerous. When they can't control themselves, their emotions, they can't protect those around them and themselves. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's, it's similar to the warrior in the garden. You'd mm -hmm. rather be capable of warrior and dangerous things and not have to use them, then have to be dangerous and not know how. Because then you're not a warrior. Yeah. And you're just a guy playing dress up. And Rogan you know? says it all the time. He goes, he talks to the most dangerous killers, cage yeah. fighters, all the time. Nicest guys. Yeah. Nicest guys. Yeah. And he goes, they have the ability. Mm -hmm. You know, they they're not bullies because they don't need to be. Yeah. So because they have nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. That's virtue. And they're capable. Yeah. Yeah. They have the means. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. And I love Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, everything, yeah, everything. Cool. Yeah. 
I saw him live once. No shit. It made me Same. feel so stupid. Yeah, you did too. Yeah. I felt yeah. so dumb. So I'm here in Indy. Uh, he's but, brilliant, man. But it is yeah. cool that he talks so high level because it forces you to like try to keep up. Yeah. And if you yeah. try, maybe I captured 20% of everything he said. But shit, 20% of Jordan Peterson yeah. for an hour, that's a lot of Dude, knowledge, yeah. man. Like, every, you know, every so often, it would make sense. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then it'd be like, hmm. Right over me. Yeah. You know, I don't know half of what just came out of your mouth, but it sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm here right. for it. Right, right. right. But um, what I'm going to kind of back us up a little bit. What did it look like when you went from working for someone else and transitioning into your own business? I'm going to shift gears yeah. here a little bit. Uh, so I've done it twice now. Uh, both times it just made sense. Like <clears throat> the first time I was working for a gym and the second time I was working for a gym. And I was watching the processes that were involved to try to gain members, to try to build a community. And I was watching all these people come into the gym that were better than average. And because they were better than average, they were either shunned or like not catered to. And we were spending all this time catering to the quote unquote money makers, which were the people that never came to the gym. Mm. Which is the best gym member for a gym owner is the one that never goes. Sure. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spend any money on them. Yeah. Yeah. Right? LA fitness model. Yeah, hundred percent. But what happens to the people that want to fucking try? Right? So are we we were we are creating this world of people that are shunned or disciplined for trying, right? Mm-hmm. So in both circumstances, I thought, man, it'd be really cool if I could unite all these garage gyms. Everybody brings their own equipment. I offer a space, and we train really hard with good people. We only train for events and uh, contests and shows. And we have this huge uh, black blackboard. I put chalk paint on a wall, and all the totals were up there. And our second location, we had a wall that you signed when you competed, and when we'd host powerlifting meets, everybody signed the wall, and it was all about making you the best version of yourself all the time, right? So we had like a huge following, <clears throat> but in both situations, it was it just made sense to separate myself from the the status quo, the norm, right? Because the norm makes me want to vomit, yeah, right. <laughs> The Matrix. Yeah. And We're I'm down here. for a good vomit party on The Matrix. <laughs> oh, just, it's, it's like we just are so comfortable with being sheep that even when we're in an environment of training, we only push ourselves as hard as the weakest person. Because mm-hmm. as long as we're better than the weakest person, we're better than most. Mm-hmm. And what kind of shit example is that for people? Yeah. Yeah. So this time around, I thought, you know, the the things I learned from owning my business the first time, uh, I'm going to take that into account. I'm going to take all the knowledge that I've gleaned, the, uh, the, uh, what's it called, the people I'm around now, the community that I've built in Indy. The city's way bigger, so, like, I have way more opportunity. Um, And I'm just going to sell at 100%. I'm going to be the strongest version of myself. I'm going to competed nationals this year uh i'm gonna fucking win it nice um i'm gonna it's out there now compete uh, yeah it is out there yeah i say it all the time to everybody yeah. what are you doing this year i'm winning nationals love it you know oh, fuck off. but that's our gopro don't worry about it it's a <clears throat> it the mindset behind it was just i want to be the best i can be and i'm only here one time mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like if it fails so be it i'll do it again mm-hmm. you know yeah, it eventually will catch on. Yeah. So, and I see right now, not to get too deep, the need, the overarching need for guidance and manhood. Men are fucking desperate for a guy to stand out there and say, "Follow me, I'm gonna trudge through this fucking forest, and you're gonna come with me." You know. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like I'll take the brunt of it, but you can follow. Yeah. You know. Man, do you follow um, Ryan Mickler, Order of Man? Uh, I don't think it is. should. Maybe. That's his, that's what he does. Wow. Like yeah. he's got, I think his Facebook group, at least when he was on our show, he had what, like 60,000 guys that followed mm-hmm. his page. No I shit. mean, dude is, yeah. that, that is his thing. So yeah. uh, if you want to get some ideas from, on yeah, how to like kind of lead that. Yeah. Ryan Mickler, uh, M-I-C-H-L-E-R. We had him on the show and is he phenomenal. A pastor? What's that? Is he a pastor? No, he's mm-hmm. not. He um he was yeah he didn't I mean 
I would, don't want to call him just a regular guy, but he was he was just he was at a point in his life where he was kind of lost. Like he was just he was doing like financial planning, wasn't fulfilled, and yep. he, he started his own podcast. He focused on himself, and now he's built like an amazing group and, yeah. and teaches what it really is like to be a, a strong man and, and yeah. be there for your family and be there for yourself and well, he yeah. does like, like father son events too oh, mm-hmm. hell yeah. he created so he moved his family to Vermont yeah. took this and he told us took this huge risk mm-hmm. on his business and you know, good thing he did but now he does stuff with like Jocko Willink yeah. so he he is very well known and is yeah. in this amazing community but built built out this barn uh, and it was cool watching all the updates. Like he's uh, he shows his sons how to handcraft things. They built their own big canoe, and so he uh, they hunt. So he's uh, teaching them all these like worldly like survival things uh, that like you really need uh, to be a man. Uh, so yeah, you'd probably you'll really like his stuff. So the reason why I like that so much is I started looking into like manhood as uh, uh, as it is in the world we live in. What is the number one set of video games for young men? It's adventure video games. Mm. They are playing war games. They're being the savior of the nation. They're out there in this full set of armor chopping down dragons. They're doing the same shit we were built to do, but in the virtual world. Never thought about that. That's why they're driven to it, because we innately as men want to be the fucking hero, Mm -hmm. right? Back in the day, you would be the hero on a daily basis because you're feeding your family. You're going to work in the fucking coal mines. You're doing manual labor. I do this all the time when I talk to guys. Use your fucking hands. Yeah. You know, pick something up. If you don't have calluses, what are you doing? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're not pressed. If you're not pressed, you're broken on the inside, you know? And video games are just the accumulation of the digital age of men looking for the game. Mm-hmm. They're looking for the the stress, you know. Interesting perspective. I've not thought about video games. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it does. Because I always loved all the Call of Duty games when I yeah. played video games. In but high why school. do you love it? You know, because I sucked at sports video games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was much better at sniping your noggin yeah. than I was yeah, yeah. at shooting a basket in two K. Yeah. Real but life it, basketball. I, yeah, I think I it like fulfills something intrinsically, right? Yeah, because yeah. we don't yeah. do things unless we're fulfilled. You know. Yeah. Like we we don't do things arbitrarily. You know, mm-hmm. like I get coffee in the morning because I like the process of coffee, right? I have a French press. Same. Love my mm-hmm. French the press. The process is amazing. Dude, it's I love beautiful. It. Yes. Man. I'm glad beautiful. I've got someone else oh. that uses it. Yeah, so I'm like the four minute guy. Like I pour it in. Four minute, yep. Switch around, wait four minutes, press it down nice and slow. Mm-hmm. I feel beautiful. like a peasant. It's great. I'll never French press. Oh. Yeah, I got two. It's, I can give you one. I put, it's, ground, it's, I put grounds in the coffee and just people spill will tell you like, oh, oh French press. It's it's more effort, but it's really not that much more effort. Yeah. It takes like five minutes to do, which is at least what you're gonna wait for a coffee machine to yeah. brew yeah. anyway. But at the end of the day, effort pure. effort's the the catalyst to everything. Like yeah. mm-hmm. to to your intrinsic value, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And people love fucking processes. Yeah. You know, I am so process driven that it it is unreal. Mm-hmm. I love morning processes. Mm-hmm. I love processes in the gym. Mm-hmm. I will always have a main lift and three auxiliary lifts mm-hmm. because I love that fucking process. Yeah. You know? And I like the way things flow with that. And then I yep. feel regulated. You ask my girlfriend, I love to have uh, things organized in a certain way. It makes mm-hmm. me feel very calm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel uh, like spun out of control. She'll come over and she's like, your apartment isn't ever dirty, but it's dirtier dirtier than you've ever had it. And I see why you're out of control right now. Mm. Mm. I just feel like everything in my life is spinning out of control. Yeah. Yeah. My bed's not made. Yeah. Or the, the two blankets that I have in my living room are thrown on the couch, not folded up on the chair. Okay, yeah. Vibrations inside. 100%. Yeah. You know, because what your external world is, is your internal world mm-hmm. labeled and expressed, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you can organize your external world, you can just work that process backwards. It's just yeah. reverse math. You know? Yeah. 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 Wow. That's what Jordan Peterson said too. Make sure your home is in order yeah. before you go out and and yeah. Yeah, succeed in the world. Private victory before public victory. Nice. And, w- and what you said about processes too. Like if if I talk to someone that doesn't have any processes, if they don't have organization, they're like, "Oh, where do I start?" Always have a process in the morning because if you win yeah. the morning. You can go win the day. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of how I look at oh, it. Oh, 100%. It's like yeah. making your bed. Yeah. 
So the reason the military makes you make your bed in the morning is not because they're being dogmatic and uh, angry or mean. It's because you're going to go through a lot of shit today, a whole lot of shit you can't control, and it's on purpose, Mm -hmm. but you can control that. Small Mm -hmm. wins. You can control that bed. That bed's going to be organized and ready for you when you come home. Mm -hmm. You're going to have calm in the morning, calm when you go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you take it out for your brain. You, You store all that shit all the time. Right, I store that my house is dirty, my car is dirty, I haven't eaten, uh, I got to do programming for this. Store all these little tiny snowballs worth of stuff in my noggin. Why don't I just remove the simple shit that takes me five minutes? Mm-hmm. You right. know? And then I don't have to store it. Yeah. That's why I don't believe that there's anything as a big decision. Big decisions don't exist. It's an accumulation of small decisions every day, all day long, to a point that seems like a big decision but it's not. It's mm-hmm. just another small one that you've pigeonholed yourself into that you now have to make a decision on. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. No big decisions. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, this, got, this got heavy quick. Dude, I, love, yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm, <laughs> loving, I'm <laughs> loving the floating <laughs> off the dome radio, baby. That's we beautiful. out here. Um, so, well, before we get deep again, I do want to uh, go back to when you transitioned into starting your own business, what are, cause we, Tim and I like to speak to a lot of entrepreneurial people, yeah. people, but even people that are just stuck. Like he and I started when we were doing corporate gigs and we just weren't fulfilled. Yeah. So I think that's cool. That's where we started it. Now this is where we're at four years later. Yeah. So like one at the most shallow point, no one can ever say we got lucky. Like we yeah. started when it sucked. Yeah, luck doesn't exist anyway. And so. and, yeah. <laughs> and you like you can hear us like the whole transition. How do we go from this step to this step? Yeah. Uh, so, what are some of the biggest challenges so far that you've faced, uh, whether you foreshadowed them or not, yeah. in terms of starting your own business, and how did you go about attacking those or creating a process to mitigate future yeah. challenges? Um, whiteboarding it out for sure. I'm uh, since I'm process driven, I have to see things mm-hmm. and I have to write it out. So I've actually got a whiteboard. Some of my videos on LinkedIn and Instagram, you can see the whiteboard behind me. I like to build uh, uh, programs with clients so they can actually see me physically draw it and we can understand it. Um, but if I can whiteboard out my next six months or even a day, I can you can put it in perspective um, physically. Uh, through your mindset while you're watching it. Um, you can feel the paper on the pen or uh, pen on the paper. You can feel what you're doing. You're hitting all your senses. Mm. But <clears throat> the process is set in place. Ask the question again. I got on a tangent. Uh, some of the biggest challenges you faced uh, as an entrepreneur yeah. and ways you've mitigated those and ways you're going to mitigate future challenges. Uh, the biggest one I'm running into right now is uh, freebies and marketing, right? Like okay. I give away a lot of freebies. So, okay. Which I think uh, is fine. It's good, yeah. right? Um, but then you end up wrestling with what's my time value? Mm-hmm. What's my... Because you only have so much time and you can charge a million dollars an hour, but you still only have so much time, yeah. right? Um, and what is my ultimate goal, right? Keeping that in the back of my head. Uh, I will know I'm successful. I tell Kylie this all the time. When I'm sitting in Cabo, because I've always wanted to go to Cabo, on the beach, I remove a client, hire a client, and bill a client on mm. the beach. I mm. will know I'm successful. Nice. So Nice. Um, because that means I can do something with my time physically and make money. Mm-hmm. I can do whatever the hell I want on the beach, on my laptop or my phone, and generate income. That's it. Right. Yeah. Because then I'm not, I'm no longer um, subject to time versus time for money mm-hmm. situation. You know, it's more of a hey, the the value's there. They're seeing the value because I put my work in. They're attaching themselves to the value that already exists while I'm off doing something else. Yeah. You know, um, but staying focused on that's hard. Um, Keeping away from any more freebies is hard because there's a lot of people that need the the value but can't mm-hmm. afford it. Um, and there's a lot of people that are really good smooth talkers. Yeah. And will talk you into investing your time, and you end up fucked. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, what kind of freebies do you struggle with giving away? Because Tim and I talk a lot. We think there's a lot of value in giving away a good amount of things, mm-hmm. not the secret sauce. Like, obviously, when any of us sign a client, they're going to get the rest of the iceberg. Yeah. But have to give away enough good shit to captivate them, get them yeah. interested, make them follow you. Tim brought up a good way to think about when someone follows you on any social media, they have subscribed to the information you're putting out. Mm-hmm. So they think it is worthy of their time yeah. to take time out of their day to watch your shit. Yeah. So what are some things uh, that you're really struggling with giving away? Or like, where are you trying to draw that line on? Yeah. Give it for free, keep it for a signed client. Yeah. So I don't believe, first off, that I could give my whole entire training platform to everybody on the planet. And if I'm not involved in it, it's bullshit. Okay. So I bring the passion and I bring the knowledge. Okay. Right. Whatever's written on a sheet of paper is subject to interpretation. And as long as you're not looking at it like I am, which you are not because you're not me, mm-hmm. you're not going to get the full value out of it. Fair enough. Okay. So my issue is the time versus money train, right? So I believe that free training sessions or discounted training sessions is a phenomenal way to get your name out there, but that is a trap. You can mm-hmm. get sucked into that shit quick. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will always have free clients. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that uh, giving is the number one uh, barometer of success. If you give, you will receive. And there are a lot of people out there that need it that just can't afford it. Yeah. And if you're talented, you got to give of your time and talent. Yeah. The problem is there are a lot of really good people out there that can't afford it. They just don't want to pay for it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So uh, that's my biggest struggle right now is mm-hmm. okay. I'm having to rein back on some freebies and yeah. I'm having to to decide who that is. Mm-hmm. And that's uh yeah. That's, and that's that's, one. that's reasonable. I mean, give it to people who truly can't afford it, but are going to do the things. Yeah, yeah. You know, if someone can't afford it, doesn't pay for it, they're not as interested most of the time. Generally mm-hmm. speaking, those are your worst clients. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not trying to set yourself up like an LA Fitness membership where they pay and don't show up. Exactly. Right. Like you said, you want yeah. to invest in people that give a shit. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what you do... <clears throat> There's a lot that goes into it, but at the end of the day, it's a relationship business. You're building relationships, you're yep. building partnerships. So you were in Indy, you were working a job that wasn't fulfilling you, and you yep. transitioned into your business. New city that you you hadn't on, that you didn't know as many people in. How did yep. you go about building a network and going about building relationships and getting your name out there from the from the start? Yeah. So. I was pretty lucky. Uh, I love people, first off. So, like, being around people is really easy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky enough to get on as a business development officer for a construction company. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I went to six lunches, seven lunches a week, seven or eight coffee meetings mm-hmm. a week. I met every single motherfucker I could get a hold of. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, and even outside of that, like, I joined as many groups as I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just... <laughs> I, and I would tell people, um, I don't care who you know that would help me in my business. Who do you like hanging out with? Because mm. I want to meet that person. Because mm-hmm. if I like you and you like them, we're going to hit it off. Right. right. And I would just channel down that until I found somebody I wasn't too thrilled with and then kill that chain. But by the time I made it there, it was like 15 people deep. Nice. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just try to meet as many people as I could. Yeah. So. And the fact that like, and that that's a testament to... Even if you're like working a job and maybe you're trying to transition to your own business and do something else eventually, you, you're you need to get as much value out of that as, as much as possible. Oh, yeah. Like that's why I always tell people like even if, even if you're working a corporate job that you don't like, you're getting paid to learn. You're getting yeah. paid to build relationships. Someone there at your office wow. knows someone that 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 you could provide value to. That could provide value to you and yeah. take advantage of what's given to you. Like yeah. you, you control what you can control. So yeah. yeah, I say it all the time. Every lift is a lesson, mm-hmm. right? So every conversation you have is a lesson. Mm-hmm. Like I learn a ton from y'all just sitting here hanging out talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I was telling y'all earlier before we started. Like the clients I learn the most from 
are the ones I know the least about or know the least about their circumstances. Mm. Like, I do not give a shit about NBA basketball. (laughs) Don't let them hear that. (laughs) I mean, I'll tell them, right? I don't care who you play for. I don't care what you're doing with it. But I care about athletes, Mm -hmm. you know, because I think athletes in and of themselves are fascinating. So my goal is to build the best athlete. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to be the best basketball player Mm -hmm. or athlete. So if I can meet them and talk to them and learn from them, that's that's more valuable than giving a shit who they play for, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but that's with everything. Every lift is a lesson. Every conversation is a lesson. Learn as much as you can from everybody, uh, even people you can't stand. Because mm-hmm. uh, then you're learning how to not act. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've had a, a ton of really shitty bosses. And I had one actually tell me one time I was an adolescent monkey. <laughs> I said, this is that's this, uh, 2016, bro. You can't... What are you talking about? Yeah, wow. yeah, adolescent monkey. So I thought, you know, I could either throw a fit about this or I could take this as a lesson. What did I do to piss this guy off so bad? Yeah. You know, and if I did something, why did he handle it this way? Yeah. How can I not repeat this? You know, yeah. never be in a position that I think I'm so fucking valuable that I get to talk to people like they're morons. Right. You know, right. Because uh, at the end of the day, I'm not. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think anyone is. No, that's why I love the gym because two twenty five yeah. is always two twenty five. Yeah, you can solve fucking cancer or be a homeless man. It's effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it doesn't matter how much money you make. It's effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? My yeah. smart ass been like, dude, is that the best you can call me? Yeah, I've heard way like, yeah. come on, what else you got? I just was astonished, man. I'm like, is this happening right now? Like, did like, you really that's, say that's that? What, that's what you went with? Yeah. yeah. Wow, I just man. started laughing. Come on, what yeah. else? Yeah. Yeah, it was a 2012 call. They want their jokes back. Come on. Right. right. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I've had, I've had a lot. A lot of mm-hmm. bad ones. But, yeah. But the bad ones are just as beneficial as the good ones. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, yeah, you figure out how not to lead people. Yeah. You know. And I think we can all say we've worked for someone that should not be in charge of people. Yeah, and it's a wonder how they end up in charge of people. Yeah. It's like, well, you play the political game enough in yeah. whatever scenario, you you move up the ladder. It's just the way that it goes. It's like that uh, magical rule of thirds, right? It's it's perfect for every scenario. It starts in the gym. If I have a third of the time I love my lifts, a third of the time my lifts are okay, a third of the time my lifts sucks. You have to have that third of the time that suck to understand what the third of the time that's great mm. is. Mm. You have yeah. to have it. Right, each one of those has to exist. Mm-hmm. So it's same thing with work. Third of the time, I'm gonna have great bosses. Third of the time, I'm gonna have shitty ones. Yeah, you have to have the shitty ones yeah. to understand what the good ones are. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, it's the concept of good and evil. You know, yeah, you get in the yang and everything. Yeah, yeah. I have it. Yeah, and you're. That's one of the things, like the self realization that every day that you wake up, there's most likely you're gonna deal with a shitty person that day, well, and and having that expectation, like. Like, the, the world's not possible for everybody to be just like you. There's got to be no. a certain percentage of people that are going to be mean, shitty, not good leaders. So going into that, knowing that, allows you to control what you can control. Because a lot of yeah. what happens to us in life, like, it happens, but it's really about how we react to it. And if mm-hmm. we know going oh, yeah. into the day that we're going to have a bad lift or we're not going to have as good of a lift or as good of a person, like, we know how to respond to it because at least we know it's coming. Mm-hmm. So That's why journaling so important. That's why journaling is part of the program or the process. Um it's because I want to know how you feel when you wake up, how you slept, what you ate. Uh, there's three uh, manifestations on there. Um, it's usually I will accomplish and you fill in the blank. I am phenomenal at, not just great, but phenomenal at, you fill in the blank. And uh, the last one is uh, I will accomplish and you'll fill in the blank. Right? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, but journaling's super important because then you're setting yourself up for success. You're setting yourself up to be able to look back and go, all right, yesterday might have sucked. I might have met 30 shitty people. But what was my mindset going into the day? Mm -hmm. Because yesterday I met 30 shitty people. The day before that, I met 30 awesome people. Mm -hmm. So did I wake up in a crap mood and I was focused on the crappiness of the morning? So I found 30 shitty people? Mm -hmm. It's generally what happens. Right. Like I go into the gym tired, unmotivated, unhappy, frustrated with myself, sore or hurt. 
all of that shit floating around in my noggin, I'm gonna have a horrible lift. Yeah. And then I can't be blown away because I set it up for that. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I hurt all the time. Like I tell my girlfriend constantly, like there's never a day that I'm like, man, everything feels fucking great. Like, <laughs> I hurt constantly. But that keeps me fucking alive. That's mm -hmm. the reason I'm on this planet. This yeah. is what I got, you know? Mm -hmm. But for a long time it was Focusing on the pain, focusing on the hurt, focusing on the soreness, as opposed to, all right, this is cool. This is a byproduct of working hard. The only reason I can get this or earn this is by working hard. So it's like a trophy, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And that mindset changes the whole game. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Hmm. We should talk about that much pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you know hard. enough yeah. people in the recovery industry yeah. from yeah. massage to chiropractic. I, uh, Take care of some of that. Yeah. Mitigate just a little bit. Yeah. So I started at Stretch Lab, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is uh, completely underrated. Really? So underrated. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. the... Uh, there's one at Ironworks. Right? Is that what you're talking about? Stretch Lab? Yeah, there's, there's Stretch uh, Lab and there's Stretch Zone. There's two oh, of them. Oh, yeah. okay. Stretch, Stretch Zone, Zone is yeah. what Drew Brees okay. found. Yep. Yeah. And gotcha. they like strap you to the table and shit on that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've not done it, but I've seen photos. I'm like, hmm, yeah, well, you yeah. about to fuck me up, huh? Wait, <laughs> well, hey, dude, I'm like super immobile, so <laughs> there's no way. That's why when you all do that CrossFit stuff, I'm like, my shoulders are screaming at me just watching. Like, there's well, no that's way. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, it shows you what areas are your limitations. It, I, pretty much all of them right like, now. That's like an overhead squat motion, will tell yeah. you almost everything you need to know yeah. about yeah. mobility. So what's cool is that Stretch Lab, we do a overhead squat assessment. When you Beautiful. First so uh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, that'll tell you a lot about a person. Yeah, is that even just a PVC pipe? Oh yeah, big time. Tells you a whole lot. Yeah, it'll make you see how uh, useless you are in the Olympic world. So <laughs> yeah, I'd still be pretty useless. <laughs> it's, it's hard, I'm not, man. I'm not going to the Olympics anytime soon. Oh, that's now hard. I look if if the day came when they replaced ribbon dancing with ultimate frisbee. I would I would start training a little harder for ultimate frisbee. <laughs> I think I'm a pretty good ultimate frisbee player. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I was on the club team in college, which probably isn't saying a whole lot, but we had jerseys. Yeah, like you know, it counts. It's legitimate, man. Yeah, yeah I it's mean, way ahead of me. <laughs> I never had a jersey. I played it, but I hey. didn't have a jersey. Yeah, I think that'd be my Olympic sport. If I ever had a chance at something, that would be it. Uh, I was about a hundred pounds lighter when I played <laughs> it. So. Yeah, that's helpful too. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty. Uh, Stocky yeah. for ultimate frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> Although good to plow people over. True, you have Give to me catch a runaway, them to plow Chris. them over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My buddy Radke in college, he would just hammer throw this thing, and I would just go. Yeah, that was that was half the game plan. Yeah. And ninety percent of the time, it worked. About eighty percent of the time, it was pretty good high yeah. odds. <laughs> yeah. Those are fantastic odds. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So clearly, you're all about uh, good mindset, self development, self awareness, um, and I know we've talked about a lot of things you've already improved on. What? Um, and I know you kind of recently started your own business again, but anything to date or anything you see where you being an entrepreneur can help you be a better individual, better friend, boyfriend, father. How how have you seen entrepreneurship? Uh, carry over into those facets of, of life? Oh, I think they carry over immediately. You have to be very regulated, right? Like you no longer are given the gift of somebody telling you what to do all the time. I don't show up to work in the morning with a schedule, mm. you know? I have to wake up and make that shit myself. Yeah. You know, I have to be regulated from Monday morning through Friday morning or through, in my case, Sunday to Sunday, you know? Um, I have to communicate with my clients way more often. I have to build rapport with my clients. I have to understand my clients. I have to dictate time that is unacceptable to communicate with clients. After 8.30, I do not answer a phone call. I will not answer a text message. We could be scheduling training. If it hits at 8.31, I'm not answering. Yeah. Because I cannot take time away from my daughters. I can't take time away from my girlfriend. I don't, I'm about to get a new puppy. I'm not oh, taking nice. time away from my oh, new yeah. dog, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, it makes you better because you're more coherent about what's happening in your life, hmm. right? How many times do we hear, 
all these people going to work and they're mindless fucking drones because they're being told what to do 24 7 they have these small windows of opportunity to do the things that they want to do and they don't even really know what they want to do but it's just free time right yeah. Yeah. i'm not in school anymore i don't have mm -hmm. free time i have available opportunity you know mm -hmm. and with a lot of the structured work environment is uh free time work coffee break or smoke break work and then when you leave you're just done you know right and it's all auto regulated mm -hmm. so we remove that uh piece of having to figure shit out by yourself so yeah. when you're self-employed you can do whatever you want you know uh a lot more trade-offs yeah but at the end of the day you become far more regulated as a human yeah which makes you better at dictating your time and being intentional mm -hmm. right? that's right uh, yeah and i feel like a lot of people there's a mental hurdle that they have to overcome that hey if i do this i'm not going to be making as much money for for the short term at, right. at first i'm because a lot of people they stay in that situation that you talk about because it's it's a guaranteed paycheck it's guaranteed money but what people don't realize is like time is far more valuable than money it's self-responsibility. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And like... When, and we're back. Yeah. And when you have that time, like, once you discover what it's like to have complete control over your time, yeah. the money will come eventually. But like, yeah, I just think it's a, it's a big hurdle people have to overcome. It's, it's not money. Mm -hmm. It's... You just said it. You have complete control over your time. Mm -hmm. You are in control now. Yeah. Jack off that calls me an adolescent monkey is not in control anymore. Mm -hmm. As much as I hated that guy, he told me what to do and I had guidance. I have no more guidance, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So now I'm solely responsible in my success or my failure. People don't want that. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why people don't like the gym. You know, I had a member join my gym back in the day. He was there for about six months. And he goes, hey, man, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go back to this CrossFit gym. Not knocking CrossFit with this, but, like, this gym was, like, shit. Yeah. Right? It's total garbage. Nobody mm -hmm. was producing any good athletes. They were literally bringing beer to the gym, fucking having a keg party and not lifting. He goes, I'm leaving this gym because I'm the weakest guy here. If I go back to that gym, I'm middle of the road. I'm like, just understand, bud. Like, you're giving up, dude. You're giving up. Like, you have the opportunity to be fucking great here. But it wasn't the fact that he was giving up because of being afraid. He would, didn't like the personal responsibility of having to fucking try. Mm -hmm. You know? He was now controlling his environment so much that he could just place himself in areas that he was okay at enough to stay off the radar because then he wasn't responsible for anything. Yeah, He didn't have to show up all the time. He didn't have to work hard. He didn't have to try, you know, which is a bullshit word anyways. Mm -hmm. but he didn't have to do anything, Yeah, you know. And he's always going to stay middle of the road at that that gym. Yeah. Rather than if, if he went from bottom of the totem pole to middle of the road at your gym. Yeah he would surpass that entire gym. And, and then what would he go back to? Well, then he's responsible for maintaining it. Yeah. You know, then he's responsible for either progressing or not. But getting to middle of the road might say, oh, it's just middle of the road. But from bottom to middle of the road at, at one of the best gyms, yeah. now you're entering you know, what I would still consider more elite ath athleticism. Yeah. yeah. Man, just keg parties and no lifting what was the name of that gym <laughs> right, right, right. now we would have what was called pole parties so i used to back when i was drinking i uh, would uh, love pabst blue ribbon oh classic uh, room temperature pabst blue ribbon by the way what's uh, the matter with you 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 started off way up here and immediately just i it. loved room temperature pabst so i would bring a six pack of tall boys monday or uh, saturday morning with a dozen donuts from duncan okay and we would sit around just a bunch of power lifters and deadlift and drink beer and eat donuts. I mean, this so. comes with territory. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we at least were, like, trying to process through things, you know, like having right. a good time. Right. Those guys would, at the other gym, would just literally show up to drink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is it's paying $200 a month to spend more money on alcohol than you are lifting. It like, boggles my mind. Spending like 400 a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to, yeah. Ugh, no the way. Hidden, the hidden extra costs. Yeah. Like, ugh. <laughs> wow. I will say my deadlifts have gone up since I cut the Pabst Blue Ribbon train. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, quite a bit, actually. Nice. So. Haven't drank a PBR in a long time. Couldn't tell you. It's a great American beverage. 
we uh so i think i probably told you but there's going to be um a zero proof cocktail lounge yeah coming to fishers yep in yep. what may end of may is that what yeah. they said it's in may or june yeah so that was one of our most recent podcasts oh yeah and i think that's going to be big time yeah because as you said there's a huge trend of, yeah. of people not drinking anymore yeah. but where do they go and it's you know yeah. bars still have that temptation yep. and it it only gets to a certain point of entertainment of watching drunk people be drunk while you're sober until it becomes annoying it took about 15 minutes for me okay so and i'm like this yeah. is really fucking stupid yeah like, so and the way they described it it's almost you know they have a 360 bar mm-hmm. so you can sit around any point at the bar and they cool. can come to you if you're just kind of feeling antisocial, you can have a table and, and kind of order off like the QR code. But they they had the great point of we need a place for people to go hang out. In the morning, they're going to do coffee because one oh. guy has a barista background. And oh, then they're yeah. going to do like cocktails. Like they're still doing, wow. you know, nice cocktails. They can do margaritas. I yeah. mean, whatever you want, alcohol free. So you're still sipping something nice. Yeah. And it's almost like, like speakeasy type the way they oh, described yeah. it. I mean, yeah. they have. Cool the concept. place is signed for. Its wow. location is off 100. Is it 116th? Uh, it's in the first Internet Bank building. Yeah, yeah or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The one that whatever. Was sinking. Yeah. <laughs> what? So, oh, I didn't know that. that. No. no. Yeah, they didn't open a while because they were sinking. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. You know how they built the whole thing and it was shut down forever? Yeah. Yeah, because think... it was literally like fucking oh, sinking yikes. in the ground. <laughs> they built it on sand or what? Uh, I'm glad yeah. they got that figured out. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I was super bummed. I'm yeah. like, this place looks great. Yeah. yeah. You can't even go in it. But yeah, yeah same uh, building. Oh, so yeah. yeah, I think end of May is when that's going to open. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, the one guy, Max, he um, talked about like even older demographics, like people yep. 50, 60, have nowhere to go hang out. And it's, if you have a nice cocktail lounge. Yep. Go hang out, have a mocktail or whatever you want to call it, yep. zero proof drink, and have a good time. Yeah. You know, have a have a booth with your friends, take a deck of cards, you know, do yeah. your normal thing, yeah. uh, and not have to worry about having booze. Yeah, and so which is killer. Yeah. yeah, and they'll still have like athletic brewing in yeah. there, so they will have other alcohol free drinks, and then they'll make their own. Great concept. Yeah, I think it's going to do well. Yeah, I think it's cool. I like the whole health kick. I think it's neat. Because it, it has is. to start slow, right? right. So the uh, understanding of a cognitive dissonance, mm-hmm. you know, too much information up front freaks you out. You deny right. it. I think that we as a society saw drinking as a social norm. And now that, that my generation, I'm 37, so my generation and the younger generation are the ones saying, all right, now I'm watching the byproduct of living like this, and I don't want it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I know of at least four guys after moving here to Indy that died in alcohol-related incidents. Jeez. Jeez. And I've only been here th- three years. Hmm. So most kids, like even my oldest daughter, is like, I see the reason to not, you know. That's good. And then there's more things like span it over into the marijuana world. Like, yeah. uh, it's healthier, it helps you sleep, mm-hmm. you know, like all these other things that are extremely beneficial we just didn't do anything with it. There's no studies on it. There's no TikTok. And now that there are those things, these free range media platforms for people that are smart enough to put the info mm-hmm. out there and back it up, right? can put it out there. Kids and people now can absorb it and make better decisions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because before it was just, I fucking hate my job. I've been called an adolescent monkey all the time. <laughs> I got to get rid of this. What do I do with my time and this energy uh, and this depression? Yeah. I'm just going to wash it away. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And even when you try to put out good info, like even I've put out videos of just like hemp or CBD benefits, yeah. and that gets suppressed. Yeah. And, and it's, I'm not even talking about, you know, smoking weed getting high. I'm just talking about the benefits of, of a CBD, a topical, or, or hemp, what you can do with a hemp plant. Because you can, you can make buildings, you can build houses, yeah. you, you can do almost anything and everything with hemp. Yeah. And it just gets suppressed. Or you're kicking the dick of people who make a lot of money. Exactly. But, you know, I, Tim's heard me go on this rant a million times, but Pfizer just bought a CBG company mm-hmm. last December or two Decembers ago for $6.7 billion. And mm-hmm. CBG is a minor cannabinoid that helps with gut health. Yeah. So cannabinoids, you know, we think of THC and CBD. There's over 100 different cannabinoids in, in the hemp and marijuana plant. 
So it's that's yeah, that's where the game is. I think CBDV can and will replace pre-workouts to a point. Yeah. So I've taken droplets. Usually tinctures, I don't re just respond well. I, I'm a topical guy for CBD. But CBDV is a natural stimulant, not caffeine, hmm. but it's a cannabinoid that gives you that little boost. Huh. And I did it one night. I was It was like 7 p.m. on the way to a meeting. I'm with a couple guys, and they had some, like maybe one tincture, half a tincture. And I didn't like feel it hit me. But after 30 minutes, like I, I finally noticed, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, I'm awake, like yeah. I feel pretty good, but yeah. I didn't have trouble sleeping. Huh. And so there's, there's some really smart brains, met one of them in Miami. He's like, we could uh, turn this into a powder form. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you can replace pre-workouts with yeah. this cannabinoid. Yeah. And so it's, you know, you, you hear about those people making all the big money are now buying those things and no one really knows about so here's the real question yeah uh we've had uh steam engines for how long first yeah. fucking trains across the u.s were steam uh, engines uh, yeah forever uh why don't we have steam driven vehicles because you don't make any fucking money on that right the guy that owns all of the uh oil uh doesn't want that mm -hmm. he makes more money by purchasing a patent and suppressing it than he will mm -hmm. purchasing it and trying to mm. up his game right yeah there's no game upping when you're making billions every year you know it's just control of the environment mm. so my only fear with the whole thing is it'll end up like most is purchased and forgotten you know yeah that's so, the fear right is there's uh, so many benefits yeah. Um, yeah we hope it doesn't go that way but you never know yeah. that's when there are people high enough in that industry that have enough pull and say and money yeah that hopefully that carries over yeah. and you know if there's a battle between them and pharma yeah. duke it out because yeah. where are the people going to side on really oh it's not going to be with pharma yeah. there's no way mm -hmm. after what's been going on exactly yeah. so people um, need to pitchfork and torch those people man <laughs> Uh, world's an interesting works place. Pfizer and I'm like, Ugh. He, goes, <laughs> he goes, I know, dude. <laughs> it's like, like even the, he knows. Yeah, yeah like, self-aware. It's, it's rough, man. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get him on for some insider info. Since <laughs> yeah. Project Veritas got rid of O'Keefe, let's uh, right, <laughs> yeah, right, pick yeah. up the reins. Um, Tim, anything else for Chris before we kind of wrap things up here? I think I hit everything I wanted to ask. I think I'm good. I'm um, Thank I you do, again for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was great. I do yeah. want to ask one more uh, before our last question. Yeah. Future of the business. Yeah. You know, whether it's three years, five years, what's what's your vision for scaling this thing? Yep. Um, so primarily online. Um, I don't want to take any more than 10 in-person clients, and then I'll hire another trainer, and they'll okay. have no more than 10. Hire another trainer, no more than 10. Nice. Okay. Um, I want the price to be premium enough that it's worth the trainer's time, but I don't want to have the same model, like you said, LA Fitness, Planet Fitness, 300 clients per coach kind of bullshit. Um, training 10 individuals that care, mm -hmm. 10 individuals that want to be there, that want to see results, that want to uh, change their life, whether it's just strictly mindset coaching, whether it's uh, training and mindset coaching, uh, training mindset coaching and recovery whatever it is I want yeah. 10 clients per trainer and the goal is to have uh, 20 trainers so, nice yeah. good nice do you have, a, you have a timeline set I'd like that to be in five years love it so 20 and five love it. would be very good. doable because so. you're already getting yeah big yeah. big contracts now too so. yeah yeah some cool stuff so. yeah you got uh, got some yeah, good yeah. shit going on yeah. awesome yeah. Um, so we always like to ask at the end of every show is how people want to be remembered so when it's all said and done, how do you want people to remember Chris Ewing? That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, you can uh, take your time. There's no brush. <laughs> hmm. Um, wasn't a, the guy that wasn't afraid to be that trailblazer, right? So we talked about it earlier. Guys are looking for somebody to wield the machete and knock down the shit in, in the forest in front of them, right? I want to be that guy, you know, uh, saying it's okay. I know this is uh, overwhelming or hard or scary or whatever, uh, 
I want to be the guy that helps blaze the trail for the guys that don't know they're strong enough to do it yet. Hmm. So that, I love that's that. awesome. We've not had one like that before. No, that that's awesome. Good. That's why we love that question too. You get to hear what people yeah. really want. It's good visual too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. The ambiguity of life, having that leader. Uh, to no. yeah, because I think a lot of people. Um, the toughest part is starting and like once yeah. people have a blueprint have someone kind of in their ear showing them the way yeah. um, it's at that point it's it's discipline yeah. so yeah. i've always asked that of guys i worked for is i just need a blueprint need a roadmap yeah uh, more I, longer i've been alive the more i've realized like i live my life in such a way that i have to create my own mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah i love that a little guidance goes a long way yeah all right, Chris. Man, appreciate your time. Hell yeah. We, we hit it hard today. So that was good. Yeah, thanks for traveling up here. And uh, yeah, I know listeners are going to get a ton of value from this one. So appreciate awesome. you, brother. All right, appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging. Until next time, we are out of here. <laughs>